கருணார்ணவமாய் கருதக்கதி நல்கும் அருணாச்சல சிவம் ஈதா கருணார்ணவமாய் கருதக்கதி நல்கும் அருணாச்சல சிவம் ஈதா Namaste and welcome to the next episode of Ananya Bhakti. Ananya Bhakti might seem like an oxymoron, a contradiction in terms. Because Ananya means not other and Bhakti means spiritual love. So love is usually between one and another <laughs> and if there's no other how can we have love so first i want to start from the point of view of advaita and read something that bhagwan wrote in english in his own hand but the self does not become an object of knowledge and there is no knower of objects in the supreme state the self is the sole reality without objects of knowledge and without anyone else who could become his knower this is very deep and this is the ultimate realization of advaita it's called kevala advaita pure non duality Unfortunately, <laughs> it's not the whole truth either. Because Bhagwan also said, Bhakti is not different from Mukti. Bhakti is as being self, Swarupa. One is always that. He realizes it by the means he adopts. What is Bhakti? to think of god that means only one thought prevails to the exclusion of all other thoughts so now you see the complete truth involves both monism or oneness and duality twoness and that has to be it has to be because right now we are in duality we're in duality and to get out of duality we have to use duality there's a nice shloka in the bhagavad purana that says it's similar to using a thorn to take out dig out another thorn in your foot so in a in the absolute sense duality is illusion but since we are in the relative world we have nothing else to work with except duality so how we get out of duality is by means of duality by using duality to remove duality by using a process of becoming to become free from becoming this is the path this is the means of self realization that bhagwan talks about here the means that we adopt is bhakti thinking of god and so with those means although they involve duality we can transcend duality and stay with us until the end because we're going to reveal a very important point about all this but i have to create the background the context first for it to have meaning in other words the complete teaching of advaita includes both oneness advaita and duality of course advaita doesn't exactly mean oneness <laughs> it means not twoness this is a very important distinction it may seem subtle but I'll tell you why it's important. 
people who believe in oneness, uh, monism, think that there is no connection whatsoever between the dualistic existence and the Advaita or the one. So the people who believe in oneness, monism, say that dualism has no reality and that the stage of Advaita is unknowable and cannot be understood by the mind. Yet, <laughs> they seem to take the position that to attain this state is simply an intellectual adjustment. In other words, it's just a belief. And if you have this belief, then you got it and everything's cool. Now, just the other day, my friend gave me a link to a YouTube video of one of these characters giving a lecture. And the first thing you notice about him is that he is completely emotionless. No expression, totally flat. Confirmed. <laughs> yeah, it goes over like a lead balloon. It sounds like a funeral. This guy's talking about the ultimate state of being, and he's like, the one is without attributes. I mean, it's like he's dead. Bhagwan wasn't like that. Papaji wasn't like that. Any of the great teachers of Advaita, huh? they had life, they had vivaciousness, they had personality, charm, wisdom. Huh? They had all good qualities, whether Dvaita or Advaita. So what's really going on here? Well, the people who talk about oneness and monism are technically called Neo-Advaitans. Neo-Advaita does not rely on the scriptures. It does not rely on tradition. And it has no native culture. It's completely synthetic, completely intellectual. And it's completely wrong. <laughs> and you can trace the roots of this back to uh, J. Krishnamurti. J. Krishnamurti, the way he used to talk, the ultimate state is completely unknowable. It can't be known by any means. And therefore, sadhana, philosophy, uh, all of this is completely useless. Uh, and nobody's going to attain by any method. And, and of course, none of his students attained. How is that? Well, he took away the ladder. He denied that duality has any use whatsoever. And so he left no means to cross over from duality to Advaita. And this is a terrible, uh, a terrible thing to do, to promote this and to, uh, to encourage people in this way of thinking is probably the worst thing you can do to them because it takes away any chance of realization. And it also makes a caricature of actual Advaita as if it's simply an intellectual adjustment. Oh yeah, I decide that I'm the one, I'm the self. That's it, that's all that's necessary. It's just an intellectual decision. Come on, there's a lot more to it than that. And I'll, like I said, at the end here, I'll get to the real point, the clincher in all of this. But first, I have to give a little background. So why does Bhagwan say that bhakti is mukti? Well, there's two reasons. One is that bhakti, as it develops and becomes more intense, leads naturally to a situation where there's only one thought in the mind, the thought of God. Now, Bhagwan also talks about mantras this way. 
that it almost doesn't matter what mantra you use, but the whole point is that the mind should be filled with one thought alone. And how is that? Then that one thought can also pass away and one reaches the self. One realizes the self. Now, this point of realization, this is a very tricky point because the mind is duality. The mind is illusion. The mind is ignorance, fear, and so many other things. So how is it that some form of sadhana using the mind can arrive at realization of the self? Well, <laughs> it might seem uh, difficult if you think the self is not sentient. If you think the self is, uh, has no power. If you think the self is just a concept and not a reality. But the self is conscious and sentient and has an influence on the things around it. And by doing bhakti, one draws near to the self. One becomes intimate with the self. Even though still in duality, still thinking there's a different difference between myself and the self, still one becomes a, an intimate associate of the self. And then guess what happens? There's this thing called grace. That is of God, which is the self, or it is the self-surrender unto God. When he has taken you up, nothing will assail you. The absence of thoughts is bhakti. It is also mukti. And finally, he says, the saguna merges in the nirguna in the long run. The saguna purifies the mind and takes one to the final goal. The afflicted one, the seeker of knowledge, and the seeker of gains are all dear to God. So try to understand. This bhakti leads to mukti because it replaces all the thoughts in the mind with the thought of God. And then what happens? The grace of God, either through the guru or directly, brings one to the final state where there is no thought. Only full awareness of the self, which means that one is the self. One becomes aware of oneself as the self. So this is the final goal of bhakti. And it is only attainable by grace. We cannot attain the self by any process of the mind. Because the mind is duality itself. But we can prepare the mind to receive the grace of God. The grace of the self the grace of guru. And this is done by thinking of God, bhakti. There is really no other way. Because if we think about liberation, if we think about non-duality, it's still thinking. It's still duality. If we make an effort to realize the self, we're still making an effort. There's still a doer. There's still an I, separate from the self, making the effort to realize the self. That means as long as there is an effort, there is an ego. As long as there is a mind, there is duality. So as long as there is any process which involves an intellectual adjustment or 
some uh, form of meditation or practice, whatever it might be, realization cannot happen because we are clinging to duality. It can only happen when we surrender fully to God and receive his grace. Now, this is the point that I've been aiming at since the beginning. I want to make it clear that without a means of sadhana, without a process that begins in duality and uses duality, one can never come to the final realization. Without a guru, without a god, concept of the supreme, and without bhakti, we see that people do not reach realization, but they reach some counterfeit, some phony ersatz substitute for actual realization. And I think one of the best ways to tell whether one has the real realization of Advaita or some phony monistic New Age counterfeit is that they retain their juiciness. They retain their rasika nature, uh, their loving, ecstatic ability to engage in relationships that are appropriate to the person seeking enlightenment. Whether, as Bhagwan says, whether the seeker of knowledge, the afflicted one, the one who's suffering, or even the seeker of gains. All can benefit from bhakti because all draw closer to the self, to God, through this process of remembering God, loving God, serving God, and so on. That means the Neo-Advaita people are wrong. And the proof that they're wrong is that they're not attaining full realization. Yes, maybe they have some intellectual concept of oneness, but that is not a dwaita realization. To be the self means to be related to all. Because after all, the self is everything. And everything, all the worlds arise within the self. So it is not that within the self there are no phenomena. But as Bhagwan also has been quoted as saying, phenomena when seen as the self are real. When they are seen as the ego, they're unreal, they're illusion. But why is that? Because when we are the ego, when we are in the mind, we are evaluating everything we see in terms of its survival value in terms of its benefit or gain to the body. And when we actually realize the self, we become completely accepting, completely loving, completely understanding of all. And no one is left out. No one is excluded. And everyone is given the means of attainment which is simply bhakti, or love of God. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om. Karunar Navamai Kardakadinalgum Arunachala Shivam Yidam